Brothers Podcast. This is ABC DVD, two brothers' alphabetical journey through our protected database of movies. I'm Josh. And I'm Noah. And today we're talking about Hackers. Hack na- the Planet. Hack the Planet, a 1995 movie. Uh, it's directed by, I'm going to probably mispronounce it, Lane Softly? Or Ian, Ian Softly? Uh, <laughs> no, that's, that's an I, so Ian Softly. Uh, he can you softly <laughs> with his words hacking the planet. That just happened. <laughs> well, uh, if you're going to mispronounce his name, I'm going to do a stupid song. Okay. He directed uh, K-Pax and Inkheart, our two movies I recognize, several others. Writer was Rafael Morez, and he has not written many things. He did this and Rage Carry 2. Rage Carry? Rage semicolon Carry 2. Oh, okay. <laughs> the Rage Carry too. Got it. It's all the rage. That's it. That's all you know. I find on him. Uh, he's done some other things, but that was all his writing stuff. Uh, starring Jerry Lee Miller, uh, known for Train Spotting, Mine Hunters, and Dracula 2000. He's also done a lot of TV stuff. Uh, Angelina Jolie, who is known for so many things. So mm. I just kind of went with like some of the top ones. Do you want to guess or? Or is that just a game for me? That's just a game for you. Fair enough. It's Girl Interrupted, uh-huh. Maleficent, oh. and Eternals, because that's recent. Okay. But yeah, this is her first film. This is her first film. Her, you know, These are a lot of their first films. Um, and then the also the antagonist is Fisher Stevens, uh, known for Short Circuit and a bit role in Mario, the Super Mario Brothers movie. Uh, TV and other things, but those are his two movies. Um, also going to do some... Uh, honorable mentions of Matthew Lillard, because I love that guy, uh, known for Scooby-Doo, SLC Punk, and Scream. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess I should do the synopsis. All right. Hackers is about a teenage hacker finds himself framed for the theft of millions of dollars from a major corporation. Master hacker Dade Murphy, a.k.a. Zero Cole, also a.k.a. Crash Override, has been banned from touching keyboards for seven years after crashing over 1,500 Wall Street computers at the age of 11. Now keen to get back in front of a monitor, he finds himself in more trouble than ever. That's a terrible synopsis. That's not how I would describe Hackers, but, you know, it's it's close to the point. Yep, it made about $7.5 million when it came out, which is not bad for what I guess was like a third-tier unknown movie, but... You know, it's like, I didn't see this in the mm. theaters, and I'm trying to recall when I saw this. I want to say I saw it the year after it came out, probably as a blockbuster new release, you know, just go in there on the weekend and say, hey, that cover looks neat, because I know I saw it pretty... Co- uh, you know, when it came out, but not in the theaters. Mm-hmm. And I love this movie. I mean, it is... I, the way I have kind of look at it now is when the 1960s had all those movies about the future, mm-hmm. that's how this feels. Like, it is dripping with just so much 90s stuff, but it's taking place in the 90s, so you don't even get the excuse of like, oh, they're really ramping the 90s up to, you know, 100. Yeah, they really might have benefited of a just a tagline of the not-too-distant future. Mm-hmm. But this is being said in 95, it's like, no, we, I'm going to be making fun of, like, that's not how computers were in the 90s. That's barely what computers are now in 2022. I know, but it's just, I mean, the dress and oh, the music God. and the things. that like, if you want to see a caricature of what the mid-90s are. This movie just will throw it in your yep. face. Um, it starts off with a flashback to 1988 where our main character is 11-year-old and he has uh, crashed all these computers and is his house is raided by the police. Mm-hmm. And I kind of thought of this was the warning that every parent made that you shouldn't download illegal music on Napster because this is going to happen <laughs> to us. Is, unmarked federal agents are going to storm your thing and then they go to court and I had to laugh. I'm like, wow, this is the early night. The video looks like it's on dial-up. <laughs> it's like it's that jerky yeah. kind of grainy. Yeah, And this is based off an actual uh, real-life event of a 1998, uh, sorry, no, uh, 1988 hack where it took down several Unix computers, several uh, thousands of uh, products were, destro- uh, were, were, were compromised. Mm-hmm. It caused... From the research between one hundred and one hundred thousand dollars and ten million dollars damages, which is a hell of a range. It's, rain. it's like is it one or the other? But yeah, but yeah. So we get the backstory of the kid, and then you know immediately flash forward to nineteen ninety five, New York City. Yep, with what I would call one of the quintessential nineties mu- movie music songs, mm-hmm. which uh, is done over the opening credits, and it's Orbital's "Halion" on and on. 
I just, whenever I hear the song, I think of this movie, I think I think it's in Mortal Kombat. Mm -hmm. It is a 90s song. Yes. It's like, if you if you could get the free rights to this song, yep. you're throwing it in your 90s movie. Yep. And then we see, now that he's 18, he can use a computer again, um, and he uses it to hack a uh, TV studio. Yep. And I'm going to say, this is probably the most realistic hacking in the entire movie, which is usually ridiculous this one he just calls up and tricks a security guard to say what's your modem number and your mac number and that's good enough to get in the 90s to get you into something everything else is ridiculous this is probably what hacking was right and it's it is setting up that he's you know he's the good guy he's the white hat hacker he's yeah. he's taking a racist off the air so he can watch his you know cheesy videos yep it's you know uh the outer limits which i am always a fan of mm-hmm but then, you know, he, he, you know, has a long night, has a, a norm, normal morning talk with his mom about virginity, yeah. you know, like we all did. Yeah, I always left the house and said, yes, mom, I'm still a virgin. And, and we have rollerblades. Rollerbl One of the 90s things. I am not 100%, but I am kind of worried when I'm rewatching this is this is why I might have tried rollerblading as a kid. Mm. And I was terrible at it. But it's like, it, there's going to be many of these things where I point out, I was like, oh, that's from the 90s! Yes. And this is rollerblades. Everyone is rollerblading to school. Yes. These are uh, pre-Matrix uh, mm -hmm. attempts to show hacking um, scenes as intense. Mm -hmm. um, we get intense music. We get the fun graphics and stuff like that, especially with uh, his battle with what we will know lo uh, later on with Angelina's character on the uh, TV program of how can we make looking at a monitor fun? Right, and they yeah. did, you know, zhuzh it up with, like, graphics yeah. and H Hacker has their yeah. own kind of icon. Like mm -hmm. it, it reminded me back when, you know, back in the day, when yeah. we had like instant messengers, like, oh, you want to have your cool tagline and you want to have your fun, you know, icon so your friends know it's you and yeah. that's this. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the hardship of finding a username nowadays without av having to add a number behind it that's is true. impossible. <laughs> yeah, no one has a number after their, their hack line. Yeah, they're, they're, they're the original. Yeah. But yeah, but no, they, we, you know, we get the, the hazing. Mm -hmm. of of um the pool, pool thing and you know it's like and there's 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 payphones oh god payphones payphones everyone. and you know if you just make a sound to the payphone it's going to let you call which is an actual hack okay. this is this is um i think a classic uh i think it's called the phone freak hack okay and this uh came from i think i don't know the hacker's name but i know it's the uh, captain crunch hack and what they would do is they found a whistle that came in a box of captain crunch and if you played the tone right it gave you a free phone call okay and so there's a lot of real hacking references and real computer references that are spread out through this that i i missed when i saw it in the 90s but now i now know about right because all this technology is obsolete it's obsolete and it, it's hilarious um we meet angelina jolie's character mm -hmm. um as she's giving uh the tour. The tour of the school and saying, you know, and you're feeling some tension there, sexual and competitiveness. Mm -hmm. And she's saying, like, you're not in my class. We get a double meaning in yeah. that. Oh, oh, you're not in her class, oh, buddy. Yeah, Shot yeah, down. Yeah. But yeah, but then he gets the, you know, the turnabout is he hacks the school and, mm. you know, has the fire alarm. Says, oh, the pool must have leaked. Da, 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 da. Yeah. And the pool on the roof, I think, is a reference to an actual hazing that happened into a New York school where they would say there's a pool on the sixth floor and there's only five floors on that school and they th think they filmed it either at that school or where that school moved to a new school but that's the old building that's the old building yeah no, and i had to la laugh when he got himself enrolled in her class and the teacher's like well he's on the list and yeah. lists don't lie it's <laughs> yeah. paper yeah <laughs> how could he put his name on this piece of paper well and it made me think of our high school which was a lot lar what seemed larger than this where mm -hmm. there were there's so many students that they had to, to go by the the computer readout where i lot I kind of lied my way into a class once because I wanted to be in it, and I knew the key buzzwords, and the teacher's like, is, is that true? I was like, yep, I'm in this class now. Yep. Yeah. Well, it, it reminded me of, a, you'll remember the story of when we were on an airplane once, <laughs> and, you know, we saw two flight attendants talking about a person who brought their dog on. It's like, well, does he have a certificate? And the person's like, well, they had a laminated badge. And she's like, oh, well, that makes it official. It just makes it official. If, if you, you laminate it. I mean, it's got the clear plus. You can't get that anywhere. Mm-hmm. But then we, we switch over to, you know, the bad guys. Mm, yes, the plague. The plague and, you know, the, the servers of the evil oil tycoons. And I, I had to laugh that they said the three passwords that everyone <laughs> uses. 
God, sex, and... Uh, uh, Love, secret, sex, and God are the four that this movie... Which is like, no, the two passwords everyone uses, password or admin. (laughs) Yep, or the classic one, two, Two, three, three, four, four, five. five. That's stupid. (laughs) It's like, none of those would pass even the basic of password management today, and it's because of people like this that we have to have, you know, weird... You know, cartoon cursing passwords of ampersand exclamation point uh, top H whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you know, it sets them up like you know almost to a cartoonish level of an evil corporation yeah. and their ridiculously overtech IT department. Yeah, and it's like oh no, they're they're we we get throughout the movie, but I'll just explain it right now that uh, the plague and one of the um, higher ups are stealing from the company mm-hmm. using a worm. Uh, which is a computer program that just nibbles data, and that they're going to blame hackers to cover their tracks. And what I found amusing about this plan of theirs is it's been in two other movies, this exact same plan. Okay. One before, which is Superman 3, and one movie after this, Office Space, where they <laughs> try to nibble just little bits amount of money and then take it away and hope no one notices. No one and knows. it never works. I was like, oh, well, they won't miss a penny. Yeah, but they're going to miss $10 million, million dollars. when you eventually close it and out. And it shows that it's the 90s that $10 million is the amount because it's like, yes, that's still a lot of money today, but it seems kind of sad and pathetic well, compared it's, to it's, other movies it's we've the, seen. It's the Dr. Evil, like, oh. I want a million dollars. Like, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's like I, that's like a purchase for an oil company. Yeah, I mean, the, the oil spills alone would be a problem, but they've got insurance, so, yeah. But yes, but yes, you know, we, but we get uh, what you mentioned last time, uh, Mister Pin Gillette uh, as, Pin the, as IT supervisor one. <laughs> well, if you look at the credits, he's named Hal. Oh, he's Hal, which is probably a reference to Hal Nine Thousand from Two Thousand One: A Space Odyssey. This movie is rife with Easter eggs of computer things like that. But yeah, Pin Gillette, the magician duo of Pin and Teller. Teller's also in this. He's a voiceover. You don't hear him. <laughs> It's a stupid joke. But yeah, Pendulette is there's a lot of you know, uh cameos in this movie. I, I wrote them down as honorable mentions of like one of the Secret Service agents is Mark Anthony, mm-hmm. the singer. There's also another singer from uh Eurythmics as a hacker. Yeah, over in London. Over in London. I mean this 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 Hat- had some draw mm-hmm. to get these people. No, no, it's like and it, the story works. Mm-hmm. I mean it just it is just so cheesy because you have to have the setup where they're having fun and then you have yeah. the turn where it's like one of the rookie yeah. hackers Joey. accidentally, you know, downloads onto a floppy disk. Oh god, the the, the, the they, save icon for they, you youngins. Yeah, they 3D printed the save icon. Yeah, Joey, who actually felt like the only person who dressed in the nineties legitimately because he had the plaid shirt. Yes, it was double colored, but it was plaid shirt. No, and we can take a pause of Anyone who is young, no, we did not dress like this. If you look in the background, the background actors are dressed in the 90s. They're all wearing, you know, beige tone flannels with baggy jeans. Yeah. This is what people would think, like, at a fashion show the 90s were. It's like, no one dressed like this. I feel it's like what the baby boomer generation thought Gen X, late Gen X and early millennials were going to dress as. is like all this leather. And mm-hmm. and it just like, no, that, that didn't happen. That didn't happen. It may have happened in New York, but I'm guessing, no, I'm betting that the grunge scene was also in New York. Mm-hmm. And yeah, Joey uh, downloads a garbage file to prove his hacking ability because he's been, he's the newbie. And they, they keep testing them. Like, those um, those manuals that they say are all the computer manuals are actually legitimate computer manuals. Okay. Um, and I love that he's this neurotic, addicted guy because you see him double-fisting cigarettes. Mm-hmm. He has one in each hand. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because you get the throwaway scene of, I'm not an addict. Yeah. It's like, okay. Okay. That was a, that was a nice scene. Yeah. And so he hacks uh, the computer system that houses the worm, and it's called the Gibson. Mm-hmm. And it's named the Gibson before because of William Gibson, the uh, sci-fi uh, author of ne- uh, Neuromancer, who coined the phrase cyberspace. Oh. So these are nice little, again, tons of references. This is a lot, I wouldn't say smarter or deeper, but there are. Uh, it's a lot richer than what you would think of, oh, just teens hacking and causing mischief. Right, and I do, I mean, I, I feel like this movie went to great lengths to be like, okay, the average American at this point has just, just, just probably started using the internet for like email and a few things. We have to like make it seem 
easy enough for them to understand. So we're going to make computer towers that look like buildings because the, there's no way we can just show an, a normal server room and be like, oh, they're, yeah. they're in there. It's like, yeah. no, no. They, it's like, oh, this server room is literally like half the building and it's, you know, electronic and there's neon and it's Tron looking. And and that was filmed with, um, with uh, models and stop motion because they, they jokingly said computer graphics of today wouldn't look right. Yes. <laughs> and... As Joey uh, is downloading the program, I found this to be legitimate of he hits download and then goes does something else because that is what we did in the 90s mm -hmm. with dial up internet of, yeah, we're going to do we're going to sit download and then I'm going to go like maybe watch a movie or something. Yeah, it's it's an hour and a half later, you'll actually get the thing yeah. you're doing. But they track him back to his place, and you get the beginning of what I'm going to co coin the nice agents. Because <laughs> nice agents wait for your shower to finish before they arrest you. Because Joey got, you know, arrested yeah. in the shower. But they're going to wait till you're done. Yeah, they want him to be clean. For exactly. The exactly. Uh, so then you get the... the Interlude, I would say the uh, the the competition. You do get the competition uh, of them being like, "Who's the better one? How can we, you know, basically uh, harass this this head agent of the Secret Service?" And I know you're probably thinking, like, "Would the Secret Service actually be involved with this?" And yes, because I did the same thing. I'm like, well, this doesn't seem like a job for the Secret y Service. Yeah, you think Secret Service they protect uh, important people like the president and they t protect currency, and that's where the hacking comes in. Because if you uh, mess with the finances and the 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 business of the United States, then the Secret Service is going to be taken care of. Now, this probably is now Department of Homeland Security or something. Probably but back in the nineties, we didn't have that. <laughs> so, but yes, they they t make a bet and they 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 harass him with you know taking his credit card over mm -hmm. and putting his you know, name in the personals, personal ads, a, a DUI. This I think is a combination of stretching out the movie, mm -hmm. but also showing what hackers can do to harass and also for fun yes. you know it's it's the difference of white hack white hat hacking of you say oh here's problems here's to fix and black hat hacking of we're gonna uh ruin someone's life right and you do see that they they think it's fun but if you kind of like look it's like man they really screwed this person over yeah uh, but then you get the the dastardly you know yeah. guy he he has created a virus yes to that, to sink ships, and I, 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 it's one of those things where my suspenders of disbelief starts to stretch a little mm -hmm. far. Of them saying, "No, no, none of these ships have a manual override. Yeah. They are completely controlled by this computer." It's like, are, "There's no one on this ship." Well, there no probably is, but it's probably a drunk captain. A drunk captain. Arr. Arr. It's, it's the the, the Valdez. It's 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 like I'm not paying attention to what the, I know, the just, computer the. The computer says to flood the ballast. You flood the ballast. Well, and it's like, and I, it is, you know, this Rocky and Bullwinkle type mm -hmm. uh, duo of <laughs> uh, of the the airhead, you know, yep. executive and you know the CEO are, are plotting, and they're talking about their evil plan right in the middle of the atrium where there's people around, and they're getting papers handed to them. Yes, it's like it's like. I mean, I know we're we're all in our own little worlds, but someone would be like, "Wait a second, what did she just say?" <laughs> yeah. Uh, then we get uh, him threatening um, our main character mm -hmm. with, uh, with and uh, with a delivered uh, UPS package. And I, the UPS man made me laugh. It's it is. I, it's an acting choice, but that UPS man gives him the mean up and down. Well, I'm I like, figured it was like he's, he 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 was like, yeah, you look like a Dave. Yeah, you, not, I, you look, look at my list. Are you Dave? Yeah, you look like a Dave. You're like a Kyle. You're like the whitest guy I saw today. <laughs> but I, I just, just yeah. want to point out. Um, we also get these interludes between uh, some of the characters having a dream sequence, mm -hmm. and when uh, when their friend uh, before he gets arrested. Uh, has the what is in essence the third dream sequence in the movie, and I thought that was one too many. Yeah, no, I mean the uh, the main character having a dream about Angelina G uh, Jolie yeah. is good. The Angelina reverse dream yeah. I thought was funny. I'm like, yeah. ah, I see what you did there. Yeah. You know, you th you thought it was something else. No, he's in leather. Yeah. This third dream, it, it's, it's it like, is... okay, are we all having dreams? But. It does come to the the second of nice agents will wait until you wake up and open your windows and storm in. <laughs> exactly, it's like and I love the you know, just arrest me, save me from my mom thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it. it is. Mm. 
Uh, there were, I noticed, uh, I don't know if this was on purpose, but I no noticed a lot of 42 references. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing this is a reference to Douglas Adams, the uh, answer to life, the universe, and everything, because I don't think they're baseball fans. No. Because uh, I saw 42 on the back of Angelina Jolie's, uh, as a, like a poster. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the cells numbers are 42. There's a lot of 42s in this movie. Right, which if anyone wants to know, 42 is the answer to life, the universe, and everything, because the Earth is just a giant computer trying to solve that. Uh, then the main character basically downloads the uh, information onto a uh, hot hard drive or floppy disk. It's a floppy disk. It's a floppy. I like to call it. But And does the most unnecessary drop-off in <laughs> yeah. all cinema history. It's like, we're going to hang outside of our limo on a skateboard, snatch it, and then just whisk away. It's like, was, was, was that, that necessary? He could have reached out of the limo, mm -hmm. but, but but he wants to show that he's cool. Cool, but I mean, he also, when he's looking into this program, you get the first of, this is the internet. It's magical kaleidoscope imagery. It's like, that's that's not the internet. Yeah, and we get them uh, trying to figure out what was on their version of the, the disc because they only got a, a half of the garbage file, mm -hmm. and it takes them like a day to decompile it, and I appreciate this because it's not the generic movie. Oh, uh, click, 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 few lines. I figured H -A -C -K, it out. I'm into the NSA. Yes. <laughs> no, and they do, and they, and they figure like that they are not well equipped to do it just themselves because they have to go into the big computer, and so we get to the, we have to go recruit other uh, hackers, hackers of the world. Uh, yes, so they go to the to the to a mosh pit. Yes, and you know talk to the TV personalities of uh, Razor and Blade, mm -hmm. and they they start this plan of we they need to get uh, passwords, they need to get viruses, they need to get a whole group to hack the Skipson because if not, the police are going to be on them in five minutes. Right, and the 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 prep work I quite appreciate because it shows them going through the trash because that's. I'll always hackers gets information walking through the office and getting actual passwords mm -hmm. and actually putting in like uh, uh, pieces of hardware to spy on people. Yeah. And my favorite thing is, and I, this is like, has free real estate in my brain of them tr uh, messing with the uh, phone service truck. And when the, actual employee comes up and they just yell truck and he falls down a manhole whenever i see any worker that goes through my head <laughs> yell truck and see what happens see what happens don't do that don't do that no but yeah no and then we get to like i guess the climax of all the hackers attacking the gibson yeah they're they're at grand central terminal mm -hmm. not station station's the post office for all you new york people who know the difference no uh they use pay phones to hack and download. And again, it seems like it's high-speed internet, mm -hmm. but they're using dial-up through a pay phone. I bet this would be the slowest thing in the world. Well, and it's like, it is it is a fun representation of, you know, they're all using their calling card mm -hmm. attacks. You know, there's bunnies on the screen. There's a, it's like, Cookie oh, this Monster, is cool. Yeah. But none of this would ever happen. Well, I mean, yeah, there's viruses that these are emulating, but they are stylized. Yes. There are, you know, viruses that spread and duplicate like the bunny. There are ones that attack the cookie mm -hmm. cache in your computer. But it's like you're talking about weird things, not graphical yeah. things. Things that are happening inside your computer that and you'll never see. But it is a fun view of watching these towers start to like shoot out electricity lightning and them attacking and you know the bad guy yelling into space yeah. while his bosses are looking on like yeah. we have no idea what's going and, on. And that's the main reason why we have the did CCO and Pendulette. It's just so someone can ask like a question and someone can answer it so everyone else in the audience goes what the heck is going on? It's like, oh, they're they're doing something. They're they're doing the bunny one now. They're doing the bunny one, and that's bad. But yeah, no, they they crack it, mm -hmm. and they're able to get on TV and clear their names. And we get the uh, hack the planet mm -hmm. again. I love you know it is if you want to find find a fan of this movie, just yell hack the planet. They'll probably yell it right back at you. Mm -hmm. And I I want to say like Matthew Lillard, who's who we gloss over, phenomenal actor. How many trash cans do you think he had to go through to figure out the clue of? They're trashing the planet, hack the planet. It's like, I hid the disc in a trash can. It's like, Grand Central Terminal and Station probably have tons of trash cans. Mm -hmm. It's like, but it's like, and I was like, wouldn't that have been on the top? He's really digging down <laughs> in there. I mean, but I mean, he gets it. They all clear their names. Yeah. It's very, it's a, it's a tidy wrap up, but you know, it's a 90s movie. And, and then uh, the plague tries to 
escape on a plane. Using a, a fake beard, you know, yeah. like you would. But you get the last nice agents. Nice agents wait till you're mid-flight getting served alcohol to arrest you and then realize, wait, we're halfway to Tokyo. Yeah, we should probably arrest them. Well, why did we wait? Yeah, we're, right. on the, what, we're on the plane. We're on the plane. We all get to go to Tokyo. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so... And then we get the conclusion of the bet that they get to have their date. Mm -hmm. They get to swim on a pool roof. Yes. And this is a historically protected pool, apparently, in England. Because this is an interesting thing when I was looking it up. Of This was filmed a lot in New York and New Jersey, but also a lot in England. Which is strange yeah, to it's me. Like, it's like if you're spending the time in one, just spend the time in the one. But yeah. And I laughed while watching this climax as... <laughs> it looks like that uh, Johnny Lee Miller is about to drown yes. because all the leather and buckles <laughs> is dragging Angelina him Angelina is doing great. She came out. He is barely treading water. It's like, are you having a great time? Would, would you help me out? Yeah, so it's like, no wonder they wanted to get into their underwear. They were going to die. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, I have to say, I have not seen this probably since the 90s of... You want people to stay around for your credits, do the, the sexy scene over your credits. People are like, well, it'd be rude to leave until yeah, I mean, they're finished. I mean, I, you know, as crass as this is, there was an ac accidental nudity scene with Angelina Jolie earlier on in the dream sequence, mm -hmm. which I don't think they intended. And I could see as a, you know, a young uh, teen waiting around, I was like, well, there might be another one. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'm surprised that got past the editors. Uh, yeah. And, and, or they're like, listen, that was our only scene we can't. We, we can have, you know. It, it was so quick, no one really noticed. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I was like, so I would yeah. suggest this to people who lived in the 90s and want, like, a cheesy kind of cult-style film of what people thought the internet was back then. Or if you really want to go back and see, like, an early version mm -hmm. of, you know, the Wild West days of the internet. Yeah, I, I put the. I'm I'm glad this is part of my collection. I will always suggest this movie to people who like it. It it's kind of like the fantastical, bombastic uh, version of this trilogy of hackers of war games mm -hmm. and sneakers being yep. more realistic, and this being just like, hey, let's go crazy. And then you could see where this would lead into something like The Matrix. Right. And if you did like this, and I, I wrote it down too, is 1992. Robert Redford has a movie called Sneakers, which is probably the more quotey fingers realistic version of this movie but it is it is so fun to watch robert redford do this kind of high tech uh, heist film well yeah it's high it's heist with com with computer technology cuz it's it's very similar where you need to get something because computers are, are, are an issue. Mhm. Mm but it's like i would suggest that as another hacky movie from the early 90s. Mhm. Mm no, those other hacking movies are uh, really enjoyable, and we you know want you to enjoy yourself because we don't want to harm you at all. Because as a podcaster, we uh, can't cause you any harm. Is that we, one of our three rules? Uh, uh, no, I got I got three. Let me do all three. Let oh, me do okay. my joke. <laughs> and a podcaster uh, must uh, release this stuff on time, unless it conflicts with uh, doing no harm. Mm -hmm. And a show must protect itself from cancellation, unless doing so conflicts with the other two laws. Those are the three laws of podcast. You're just glaring at me. You spend a lot of time for this. <laughs> this I didn't line. know. I didn't know what stupid pun to do. You, for you could have like from the high tech world of the uh, '90s yeah, no, to the high tech the, world. No, the, that's your transition. I do stupid puns. Oh, okay. Okay, continue with this. And so, yeah, we're, those are the three laws of uh, podcasters. But if you'd like to know about the three laws of robotics, join us next week for iRobot. Mm, Will Smith. Yes. Alan Tudyk. Yeah, don't want to harm. No. Don't want to. Goddamn robots, John. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, come join us next week. Uh, hope you can watch it. Hope you watch Hackers. And if not, please do. And we'll see you next week. Hack the planet, all. Hack the planet. Bye. Bye. Not pull up. So vamp Noah. Do 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 hacking hacking hacking. Gonna cut this out of the podcast. Do, do, yep, do, do, I do, thought do, I had everything scat, prepared. Scat, okay. Scat, scat. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna take an intro <laughs> from you, but oh your intro is awful. You know what? You couldn't even remember a quote. <laughs>